How do we eat kosher? Let me just tell you, in the last class, uh, Nate was, is actually Jewish, and so I don't know if anybody in here is Jewish or not, stuff like this. This is how you eat kosher. When you go to the grocery store, what do you do? You pick up the can, and you look for, it's got a circle with a K in it. It's got a K on the can, it's kosher, okay? I'm joking, but not really, okay? Do you guys know about the K on the can? Okay, yeah, so these K on the can, it's kosher and stuff, that's cool, okay? So that's, okay. Now, let's, how do you eat real kosher? Uh, land animals. How do you eat land animals kosher? There's two rules for land animals, two rules for land animals. They gotta do what? Split the hoof and chew the cud. Split the hoof, chew the cud, okay? Split the hoof, chew the cud. Therefore, are, is beef good? Beef good, uh, sheep good, goats good, pigs are no good, why? Split the hoof, but don't chew the cud. So pork is not. By the way, did pork have a problem with trichinosis, however, back in those days as well? So pork is out. Uh, you go to a Jewish person, you say, hey, let's go out for, you know, let's get some ham and, ham and cheese. Okay? Now, just between the two of us, have I seen Jewish people eat pork? Um, yes, the answer is yes. Okay. You as a Gentile, should you offer them pork? Is that an insult? Once upon a time, remember I told you Saturday night, go out and everybody's partying and stuff? Once upon a time, I was out at Key Carcione in that area getting some pizza, okay? So we're going out, but stuff, we're going to get some pizza and stuff. There's all these people pushing in, yelling their orders and the pizza order and things. And all of a sudden, somebody yells out, this is the honest truth, yells out, pepperoni pizza! And all of a sudden, all these people that are yelling, all of a sudden the whole place becomes like dead <laughs> silent. Now, what's the problem? You saw my hair, I did have hair back in those days. And stuff. Is it clear that I'm not Jewish? It's clear that I'm not Jewish. And everybody's looking around. Are they looking around for a Gentile? And like, I was a Gentile. And so question, is that the time you get out of there? And so it's all of a sudden you start backing up. You realize what's happened. I didn't do it. I mean, I'm not that dumb. I didn't do it. But uh, they're looking around and I'm Gentile and stuff. So I basically we just backed down. They took off as fast as we could because uh, that's not cool. Okay, pepperoni pizza. Don't do that. Okay, so don't do ham. As ham is no good and stuff. Now, that's land animals. What about sea creatures? Sea creatures. Two rules for sea creatures. Sea creatures got to have what's actually do it this way. What's normal for a what's normal for a fish? Has scales and has fins. Is that a normal fish? Has scales and fins. So do you see how that normality thing fits in here? Skin. Now that means what? Bass. Bass good. Bass good. Um, trout good. Pike. Uh, northern pike good. Walleye good. Um, what other game fish do we eat? Salmon good, halibut good, yeah. What, what's, uh, tell me about catfish. What's the problem with catfish? Scales and fins. So you guys ever pick up catfish? Catfish has got what on it? Skin? Okay, yeah, it's skin. It's just like skin. It's like an eel. An eel, you know, skin stuff. So they don't do catfish and things, okay? But they do. By the way, don't they do, they don't, I don't think they do lobster either. Yeah. And his, his skin is like rubber after a few minutes of being rushed out. Yeah. You have to eat it right after it's cooked. Yeah. His skin turns rubber and you can't eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Catfish. I actually, I grew up, my dad used to catch catfish too. I like catfish, but it just, you know, you're Jewish, it's, it's not and stuff. Yeah, Heather? Isn't it because they're bottom dwellers? That's another thing people suggest that because they're bottom feeders and things like that, that there's also more chance for disease and things like that. I look back and I say, that may be, but I like this idea of normal, that a fish, you know, normal, I think I take that over the bottom dollars because the other one that we never ate was carp. Carp are, are suckers on the bottom, but they've got skins and, skins and uh, fins and scales. And so I'd rather eat a catfish than a carp any day. But anyways, I'm sorry, but uh, okay. Yeah, let's get on with this here. We got flying creatures, flying creatures. What kind of flying creatures? No birds of prey, no birds of prey. What are birds of prey? Birds of prey are birds that eat blood, okay? Do you get the notion that eating blood is not good, that Jewish people are not allowed to eat blood? Birds of prey eat blood. So hawk, would a hawk be, could you eat a hawk or no? No hawk. Vultures, good or bad? Bad, okay. Owls, good or bad? Bad, okay. Any of these kind of an, uh, birds that eat uh, birds of prey, um, like vultures, hawks, owls, that kind of stuff. Uh, what about pheasants? Pheasants good, 
uh, I got a, a family of turkeys that come every day in my yard now. I've got five turkeys that come out there, and uh, they, they eat in our yard and stuff. Are turkeys good? Turkeys good. Um, what other kind of birds? Oh, quails. Did the Jews eat quail? Do we know that? The, the, remember the quails and stuff like that. So now, the fourth one here is insects. They actually allow them to eat insects. Hoppers, yes. Flyers, no. Hoppers, yes. Flyers, no. Can you tell me somebody that ate grasshoppers? Does anybody know from the Bible? There's somebody who ate grasshoppers. Yes. John the Baptist. Yeah, he ate grasshoppers and things. When I was out in Sinai, Ora, who is our tour guide, we were out in Sinai for three weeks, she made us walk everywhere. She said, you're not riding, you're walking. And she made us walk, and at one place she said, I'm going to have you walk up here. We had to walk over the ridge and stuff. And she said, when you go up there, she said, be careful about these black grasshoppers. They have black grasshoppers. In the desert are many things poisonous in the desert. They only get like one chance to strike, and so many are poisonous. She said, these black grasshoppers will spit and it's like a bee sting that they will spit. And he says, if it hits you in the eye, it will poke out your eye. So we're out there walking down this path, and guess what? All of a sudden, man, right in front of us, boom, a black grasshopper is like that, right? So I see this black grasshopper. I said, hey, man, I came all the way over from America. I get to see a black grasshopper. I'm going to get a picture of this thing. So I'm trying to get down. I get glasses, see? It doesn't work. And I got a camera. They hit the camera. So, so I'm getting down this black grasshopper. My wife, meanwhile, is screaming, black grasshopper, run, run, black grasshopper. So take it off. I'm trying to get this picture. The problem was when you do it without a telephoto lens, what's the problem? The black grasshopper, my picture is just a little piece of black, and I, I totally blew the picture and stuff. So anyways, this is a disaster. So but anyway, stay away from those black grasshoppers. But by the way, grasshoppers, I always said, put grasshoppers in batter, call them chicken wings. Nobody will know the difference. So anyways, do insects have, do insects have high protein? Yeah. And so insects, hoppers, yes, flyers, no. Now, yes, sir. Where are some examples of hoppers? Hoppers would be grasshoppers. Oh, grasshoppers, locusts, that kind of thing. Whereas flyers would be things like bees and, you know, things, mosquitoes and stuff. You know, so, so hoppers, yes, flyers, no. Now, three problems that come up, and we'll just stay, if we finish this slide, we'll call it a day. I had a friend, Kevin Carr, who's in Secular University. Guy in the Secular University said, the Bible's full of scientific errors. So Kevin, being a wisecracker, he always raises his hand and says, I've read the Bible through several times, and I've never seen any scientific errors. The professor says, oh, really? You've read the whole Bible, right? What about Leviticus chapter 11, verse 6? And you can just see Kevin cringing. Leviticus, he's a Christian. Does he know Leviticus very well? Leviticus. And so the professor says, in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 6, it says the rabbit chews his cud. The rabbit does not chew its cud. By the way, is that true? In order to chew a cud, you need how many stomachs? Do you need multiple stomachs to chew cud? The rabbit doesn't chew his cud. Is that correct? That is correct. However, is the Bible always talking in scientific terms? Does the rabbit always like chewing on things? Now, it's possible. Is this the language of appearance? In other words, the language of appearance, not necessarily a scientific description that it's actually cud come up from their stomach, but that the rabbit chews its food over and over and over again. Okay? Is it also possible that this term rabbit is a mistranslation and it's really talking about a rock badger? Okay? In other words, when you go between countries and you're 3,000 years different, it's possible that you've got the translation wrong between animals. Animals are hard to translate. Animals are hard. Some animals are hard to translate. So it could be a translation problem. It could be that it's just the language of appearance. The second one, bats. The bats are considered birds. In chapter 11, verse 19, it says the bats is grouped with the birds and you don't mess with the bats. I had a uh, Probo. I told you about this guy named Probo in prison. Probo was an unbeliever, came in prison. Probo puts up his hand, he gets in class, he says, Professor, I found an error in the Bible. And it says, it says that the bats are birds. And she says, everybody knows that bats aren't birds. I ask you, a tomato, what is it? It's a fruit. Question, what happens if you're in another culture and they call a tomato a vegetable? Is that a big... Does the whole world have to use the American classification system? A bat does what? Does a bat fly like a bird and things like that? You say, well, a bat's a mammal. Did, did, they, have to, uh, you know, did they have to follow exactly our classification system? No. No, they classified things differently, obviously, than we do. So it's just a matter of classification difference and stuff. You don't make, you know, you've missed the whole point there and things. 
The third thing that's a problem in the book of Leviticus that a lot of people have trouble with is this prohibition against homosexual behavior and stuff. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, and chapter 20, verse 13, two passages that, that come out really and say, you know, man shouldn't sleep with another man kind of thing. And so those are, those are three problems in the book of Leviticus and things uh, that are there. Now, what we will do next time is talk about the sacrificial system. And so what we want to do next time, we'll go through the sacrificial system. We will finish Leviticus next time. So take care. Have a good time with a long week here. Days off. <laughs>